This is the fourth episode in an ongoing series about the artist Wood Gaylor and American modernism in the early 20th century. I'm Alice Boone, Curator of Education and Public Programs at the Fleming Museum of Art. And I'm Andrea Rosen, the Curator. In this episode, we'll discuss how Gaylor and other artists participated in public social relief efforts after World War I to raise money for aid organizations like the Red Cross. This social and historical context helps us reconsider the ubiquity of signs, flags, and symbols in Gaylor's work. Even when it's a background to a busy scene, there are messages everywhere. Indeed, Gaylor's work feels all the more relevant right now as we consider how we're interpreting so many public health messages during the coronavirus pandemic. We've looked at Gaylor's posters in episode two as a way of looking uh, and thinking about how Gaylor plays with perspective in the artist's studio. You can't tell where the artist stops and his art begins. But there are other unusual elements to this painting. What is the story of this scene? The group Gaylor was a part of, the Penguin, banded together to produce in assembly line fashion these giant posters that were mounted along Fifth Avenue in New York City as a fundraiser for the Red Cross in December 1918 following the close of World War I. And it's interesting to think about the images that Gaylor and his friends are focusing on, the repeated image of the close-up on a nurse's faces, the use of the Red Cross as a symbol of the organization and of healthcare workers more broadly, and then uh, this sort of allegorical image uh, to the back and left of a woman holding her cloak over a child. And I like to think about Gaylor's use of flatness and the way that flatness carries into the posters themselves. The way that when you're communicating out in public with things like giant posters and murals, um, flatness is a key stylistic choice in order to communicate your message quickly to passersby. I'm also interested in the fact that this is December 1918 and the flu pandemic is raging at this very moment that Gaylor and his artist friends are celebrating healthcare workers. Uh, and of course, that has echoes today. The mounting of posters along Fifth Avenue was a very public, one could even say theatrical, presentation of relief efforts. And we know how Gaylor loves the theatrical. What are some other examples of public spectacle intersecting with good, social good, in Gaylor's work? Gaylor depicts a very interesting uh, part of the war effort in Liberty Bond's USS Recruit. The USS Recruit was a land ship. It was a fake, non-functional copy of a battleship produced, mounted in Union Square in New York City. Uh, as a way to recruit soldiers for World War I and to sell Liberty Bonds to fund the war effort. And in Gaylor's painting, he presents a very flattened, compressed, almost claustrophobic scene in Union Square Park of people, spectators gathering to watch the, the soldiers at, at work at the ship, um, to read the signs promoting all over the purchasing of Liberty Bonds, also pressed up against the, the space of the city in the form of of a building. So again, flatness and, and signs are everywhere and are a crucial part of Gaylor's communication of what's going on in the scene. Like many associations of artists or fraternal organizations at the time, the Penguin had a strong social function. Indeed, their work in the cooperative mural workshop shows that they uh, were always really interested in how art can serve as a strategy for engaging the public in a social effort. Yes, Gaylor's artist groups that he was a part of, their primary function was to get young progressive artists opportunities to exhibit and sell their work. So we see an example of that in HEF Auction. The Hamilton Easter Field Foundation was a group that um, Gaylor and his friends founded um, to uh, honor uh, their mentor, Hamilton Easterfield, who was always very supportive of them by continuing to support young artists. And so they would have these dinner dance auctions. They would sell artists' work, giving them some of the proceeds and using the rest to buy more work by young artists. And then to engage the public in this festive event in the act of collecting art to encourage it further. Um, and in the painting, you see Gaylor's typical flattened space, 
his use of signs and symbols and flags and a mural bedecked room. Um, once again, those hallmarks of his flat style as a part of that message. Those signs and symbols are a reminder of how potently art communicates messages, as propaganda artists have long known. How does the Penguin's Red Cross campaign fit into the larger social context of artists transmitting social messages at the time? Well, the Fleming Museum has a whole collection of World War era propaganda posters, including a whole group of images put out by the Red Cross to advertise that very fun drive that Gaylor and his friends were painting posters for. So we get to see the other side of the messaging around this event. Once again, presentations of nurses as heroic figures, as maternal figures, the Red Cross as a symbol for this effort. And then on the flip side, on the, on the military side or more masculine side, we have those typical images of, of young hardy soldiers and, and of Uncle Sam as an important recruiting tool. What visual re rhetoric from the Red Cross campaigns from 1918 are contemporary artists referencing and then transforming in current uh, public health of messaging efforts? Yes, many contemporary artists making posters to communicate public health messages or support of healthcare workers are calling back to some very obvious um, uh, echoes of those World War era posters. So we see a lot of uh, Rosie the Riveter-esque figures. We see an Uncle Sam-like figure saying, I want you to stay home. And then we see, you know, these sort of images of almost 1950s era style nursing figures, that repetition of the Red Cross as a symbol for healthcare workers and for the efforts to the support them. All often, once again, in a very flattened style. You had a moment recently when you started to see Gaylor's uh, influence everywhere as you saw posters that kind of are bedecking Burlington. Yes, many people are putting posters outside their houses, in their windows, as a way to communicate their gratitude to healthcare workers. One of them is, in fact, a giant red cross on the side of a house saying thank you. And then everywhere are these images of rainbows being put in windows as a symbol of hope and support. Okay, I found it a sign too. Um, and I like the way that the flatness of the window pane here allows for a play between inside and outside or real and illusion, just like in Gaylor's posters. How does Gaylor's work help us see how we've transformed our windows and lawns into these spaces for spectacle, encouragement, and social messaging? Well, it's interesting. We've been talking about the flatness of the images themselves and, of course, the surfaces on which they are being posted, windows, buildings, are flat as well. And, you know, at this time when we cannot see each other in person, in fact, uh, all of our interactions are being mediated through flatness, whether that's through a window or through a computer screen. But that doesn't mean that the power of those messages is any less. <laughs> <laughs>